All right, guys, we just had the Samsung Galaxy Unpacked event for 2024, where they unveiled the Z Fold 6, the Z Flip 6, and a whole bunch more. I spent the last like 30, 40 minutes typing out a long thing of posts to post on threads with images and a synopsis and links and everything. And I posted them and it only posted the first like four of them. There were like 12. So rather than trying to do that again, I'm just going to wing it. We are winging it here, guys. So the first thing in this quick recap of this event, I'm going to give you everything you need to know as quickly as humanly possible. The first thing that they did is they came out on stage and they began talking about Galaxy AI. They talked about how big a deal this is, how important it is, and it's expanding to more and more devices. They talked about how they're building a Samsung Galaxy AI ecosystem and how it was going to be safe and secure. Shortly after that, we jumped into the first sort of product of the event. We're talking about Samsung Galaxy Health. Maybe it's just Samsung Health. They're talking about things like sleep tracking, and then they announced a new feature called Energy Score. This is basically a readiness score from Fitbit. It's going to be using all kinds of different things that it's tracking about your body to give you an energy score the next morning. This should kind of advise you on what you should be doing with your day. Should you be more active? Should you be resting? I actually found this to be really useful with my pixel watch and fitbit cool thing about this though is that samsung health does not have a subscription so this feature is not behind a paywall tip of the hat to samsung for that one really really cool another thing that's quite cool is the next thing they announced which was the galaxy ring it is finally real it is finally here and guys i think it looks pretty cool. So we're going to be getting about seven days worth of battery life on this ring. It's going to be tracking several different health metrics like your activity level, your heart rate, and of course your sleep to help with that energy score related thing. We'll jump over to the listing here quickly for the rest of this. You have silver, you have gold, and you have black. If you scroll down, it is $399. I was hoping to be closer to 300, not 400, but it is definitely a premium product at $400. It is made of titanium, which allows it to be only 2.3 grams. That's really not too bad. I guess it can be up to 3.2 grams if you need a really big ring, right? Finger sizes vary. 2.6 millimeters thick, 80 minutes to fully charge it inside its charging case. And of course, it's going to be durable. Being titanium, it should be fairly durable just on the outside, but of course, it does also have that water and dust resistance. Let's see, does this actually say? We've got a number four there, so let's scroll down and look for number four consistent with 10 atm water resistant classification 100 meters of fresh water for 10 minutes ip68 rating up to six feet of water for up to 30 minutes definitely not going to be bothered by water so next up we got the galaxy watch ultra and this is another thing that had been leaked many many times leading into this event and it looked exactly like you'd expect it to look it has that sort of squircle uh bezel around or i guess you could just say the form factor itself is this squared off circle thing and then a round watch face on the inside. So it kind of almost looks like an Apple watch with a round watch face. It's a little bit of a weird look, but some people might really like it. It is what it is. Let's take a look here at the listing for this one as well. 47 millimeters. It is $649. And yes, I understand that I believe the Apple Watch Ultra is actually even more than that for me it's very difficult to look at any watch and think it's worth 650 dollars but some watches are very very expensive now they are also quoting 100 hours of battery life on this thing with the battery saver mode personally i'm not that blown away by that okay like that's good right so you're saying you know what three days will be 72 hours so you're saying basically four days of battery life if you turn on the battery saver mode maybe that's better than i'm thinking maybe four days on battery saver is actually pretty solid i've talked myself into it in real time so we also have a couple different colors here so there's the titanium gray there's the titanium white and then you guessed it titanium silver and then you have your different watch bands here i thought that these were going to be like the solo loop style that the apple watches have been using but it's not i thought i saw these loops and i thought maybe that's what that was but no it actually just is kind of a regular looking watch band looking at these specs two gigabytes of ram 32 gigabytes of storage a rather large 590 milliamp hour battery it is 60 and a half grams in weight this is a hefty watch 
It does have the same water resistance as the ring, which is really, really quite good. It has this new kind of GPS that actually uses two connections to two different satellites at once to get a more accurate GPS signal, which might be really important if you are kind of a health tracking person. Maybe you ride a bike a lot and you really want to know exactly what's going on. That is going to help out a lot as well. And with that longer battery life, sleep, sleep tracking should be a little bit easier to pull off. They did also mention blood pressure tracking as well as ECG tracking. These are things that, again, FCC has to approve of. ECG is good to go. I'm kind of skeptical. Is the blood pressure monitoring actually going to be a thing in the United States? They mentioned it was okay in the UK. I'm not really sure exactly what's going on there. And then they mentioned that it was the first watch that could actually see the early signs. It could actually detect sleep apnea, which got a rather loud pop from the crowd. I guess that's kind of cool. Now, there is also just a normal Galaxy Watch 7, and it's going to be starting at $299. And of course, it's much more similar to the Galaxy Watches that we have been seeing. They were barely going to talk about this watch at all. Barely got mentioned, so I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on it here. We'll have the specifications and so forth of both on the screen at some point throughout this video. It looks like the Galaxy Watch 7. It looks fine. If I didn't already say it, starting at $299. Next up, they talked about the, finally, the Galaxy Z Fold 6. They said this is the thinnest and lightest device that they have made, the thinnest and lightest Z Fold as of yet. They talked about how the cover display was going to be wider than before and also taller than before, 6.3 inches. Nice graphic there that shows that all of these leaks that we'd seen for the last several months ended up being absolutely Exactly true. Now, what was very strange about this portion of the presentation for me is actually just how long they spent on the device. They did talk about some new technology with their folding displays. They talked about this new sort of layer that they were putting in it, this coating that allowed them to remove a layer from the ultra thin glass to make the ultra thin glass in totality thinner than before, flatter than before, and more durable than before. And that is very, very cool. It's good to see these sorts of improvements. They talked about how the screen was 20. 600 nits of peak brightness, which is also very, very cool. But after that, they really didn't talk about the hardware like at all. They didn't talk about the camera at all. It's the same camera tech and hardware we've had for the last several years. No major changes, no changes that they mentioned, period, on the camera setup, which is honestly kind of crazy. It was so thin on new stuff that they proceeded to talk about circle to search again for several more minutes. We talked about the fact that you could translate stuff with circle to search. This is a feature that's already out on other devices. I'm pretty sure that's the thing. Yeah, it's already on my Pixel Fold. Like they're talking about features that are already out on other devices while they're talking about their Z Fold 6. Kind of a little bit wild to me. One thing that was pretty cool was the ability to use circle to search to actually solve math problems and not just solve them, actually see how to solve them. So it's not just giving you the answer. That is kind of cool. But again, going back to the Z Fold 6, really, really scant on new stuff. This wasn't actually in the presentation, but I think that's really like useful and important. This was a post by Michelle Ramon. This is a OnePlus Open next to the new Z Fold 6. I believe it still is slightly more narrow, but it is actually much, much closer than I think a lot of us were expecting it to be. This is a big step in the right direction, and here the device has actually opened up. Again, I know that it looked underwhelming, but side by side, that's not too bad, so credit to Michelle for that awesome comparison. For the next several minutes, they talked about Google Gemini. Again, something that's there on Every single phone already, they talked about some new things that were coming, the ability to use context, right? So you're watching a YouTube video, you can ask it something and it will know you're asking about something in that YouTube video and it will answer. You can do this on the web already. Google already showed this stuff off. They're just showing it again. This seemed kind of strange to me. We talked about their Composer application, which uses Gemini Nano to generate text locally on your device. Again, this is not new. This is stuff that we have seen already. One cool thing that they showed that was in their Notes application, the ability to have a recording going that's listening to, let's say, a meeting or whatever, and it's actually breaking the speakers up into different people. We've seen this before. But on the other side, you're scribbling, you're taking notes, and when you play this back, it'll play it back in sync with when your notes were being written. You can also have these, uh, the transcription of this recording summarized. So that stuff is kind of cool. It's nothing that's super duper new, 
but it is pretty cool. Now, one thing that they did show that I thought was really, really interesting and I'm really excited to test is something that they are calling sketch to image, if I am remembering correctly. Basically, what you can do is sketch something out. It's going to know what you sketch and it's going to make a much better looking image based on that sketch. This is straight up co-creator on the new Copilot Plus PCs that Microsoft has just put out. On these PCs, this feature sucks. It's terrible. I can't get to do anything. So will this sketched image be better than co-create? You have to wonder, you have to think probably it will be. And the most impressive thing that they showed is that you can do this sketched image on top of already existing images. So they showed drawing a rough sketch of a of a, basically a cruise liner in this river and it, boom, put it in there. It made this cruise liner, put it in the image with reflections and everything. That is very, very cool. Next up, Sydney Sweeney. After that, we're talking Z Flip 6. There are more improvements to the Flip 6 than to the Fold 6, but they spent a very, very small amount of time actually talking about the phone. They talked about all sorts of other things, but not much time on the phone. So the main camera is now a 50 megapixel sensor. It is the same thing as in the Z Fold, which is a decent improvement. But they talked about how photos are processed, and this is like not new stuff. This is stuff we've had for a while. They did also talk about the flex camera mode and the fact that it's going to be able to sort of automatically zoom in so you can do a hands-free photo. You're, maybe you're too far away and it needs to zoom in on you, kind of center you. It's going to be able to handle that for you automatically, which is pretty cool. They also talked about the camcorder mode where you hold the thing up, sort of fold it over and use it like a camcorder and the person you're filming can see themselves on the preview, the cover display. Speaking of that cover display, you have a whole lot of new stuff going on there. Apparently new applications, new things you can do with that cover display. Nothing crazy, but new stuff nonetheless. A vapor chamber is being added to help keep this device cool, prevent overheating. There's also a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Now, speaking of the Fold 6 and the Flip 6, there is indeed a $100 price increase on both. $18.99 for the Fold and $10.99 for the flip and i think that it is kind of difficult to justify these price increases given the fact that both devices have very few new things about them we will double back here quickly and show off the different appearances of these devices as well so this is the fold 6 and as you can see here we have some online exclusives which is kind of like a what would you call that aramid fiber backing which is kind of interesting there is another exclusive color which is a white there is a pink there is a purple and there is a silverish gray color. That purple's pretty cool. I actually don't hate the pink either, if I do say so myself. Four of these flip, same thing, aramid fiber. You have an orange, you have a white, lots of colors for the flip six. Yellow, teal, gray, and then sort of a nice light blue color. Next up, we have the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro, and these basically look like a futuristic version of an Apple AirPod. You've got this kind of nifty looking blade light on the side of each earbud, and I do like that these Pro versions are actually in ear. They're not like the ones that just sort of rest sitting there sort of on top of your ear, but not actually in it. They do also have these stems, which I do actually prefer. It seems like they stay secure in my ears longer. Honestly, this part of the presentation was kind of a swing and a miss for me. Like they spent a long time explaining adaptive ANC, which is cool, right? So the example they gave is a jackhammer on the street gets brought down, but the siren of an ambulance gets brought up. That's cool. It's not new, but it's cool. I'm sure these earbuds are going to sound great. I'm sure the build quality is going to be very good, but just what can you say about them? They're earbuds. Until you can like have someone put them in their ears and listen to them, you can't really do much. You just kind of can hold them up and say, they sound good, I promise. Not much more can really be done there. Now, they do also have a normal set of new earbuds as well that do not have the in-ear part. Let's actually pull up the page for the Buds 3 really quickly. Here are the Buds 3 Pro again. Light bar there on the side. You have them in white. You have them in silver. And we are starting out at $249. Let's switch to the standard version, which, you, as you can see here, don't have the in-ear thing. White and silver are your colors there. And we are starting at $179. These are probably going to be pretty good. If you just don't like having your ears plugged, there is an advantage to having them like this personally. I'm not a big fan of that style. They do have both, though. So everything that they've announced, all of the stuff, is apparently available from July the 24th. They also did mention that the Flip and Fold are both going to be getting seven years of OS upgrades, which is good to see. Hopefully those foldable screens survive seven years, but if they do, 
you'll still be getting updates. One last thing that I want to mention is a really, I think, very smart thing that they threw in at the very end of this. They know that people are concerned, they're worried, they're nervous about this AI processing stuff. How much of your data is going to a cloud, right? So what they're going to do, apparently, is they're adding this little toggle in your settings that says process only on device. For added privacy, you can prevent collection and processing of your data for Galaxy AI's advanced intelligence features. Online processing provides the best results and is required for some features. So basically, you're going to lose some features, but you're going to regain sort of that sense of privacy. Everything will be done on device locally with something like Gemini Nano instead. We need to see much more of this, much more granular control for these sort of privacy related things. But guys, that is about as quickly as I can run you through an event that was, I think, maybe like an hour or an hour and a half long. So surely I've missed a few things. But those are the big things, I think, about this event and about these devices. There will be affiliate links in the description below for everything I mentioned. If you want to help support the channel, you can click on one of those links and make a purchase, and I will earn commission from that. But what I want to know from you guys is, was this underwhelming to you? I'm going to drop a community post, a link to a community post in the description down below as well with a poll for you to vote on and tell me how you feel about this event. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.